Ladies and gentlemen, the American Jury and Bulldog Nation, welcome to the next episode of Eric Dieter's The Law, where I, a retired lawyer, gives you an educational presentation about many facets of the law. We're just getting rolling. I think we've probably done six or seven. My guess is we'll have hundreds of these things. Uh, we're going to do general ones that we can always uh, pare down, uh, it, it, break them down even further. Today, I think, is a really important one because it's in the news a lot. Now, you have defamation cases filed by Trump. You got defamations filed against Trump. Uh, you've got defamations uh, cases like the Sandman case. Uh, there's just a lot uh, of defamation litigation that's going on these days. Uh, I, when I practiced law, handled lots of defamation cases. I'm going to share with you my knowledge of defamation. I will bet you that you're going to learn some things today that you didn't otherwise know. So here we go. What is defamation? Defamation is a false statement purporting to be a fact. Now, this is really important. It usually has to go to somebody's character or reputation, but it must be specific. It can't be all general. Let me give you a great example. If you were to say, Eric Dieter sucks, not defamatory. If you say, it is, but it's not legally defamation. If you say, Eric Dieter's is a crook. It's general. It's general. If you say Eric Dieters is a convicted felon, that's false. It's not true. Obviously, it's not. And that is very specific. That would be defamation. Um, you know, if you if you say that your next door neighbor is creepy, not defamation. If you say your next door neighbor is a pedophile, you need to have some facts to support it. Very important. And I left this out in the outline, but I'm going to add it. Truth is always a defense. So somebody can say, Eric Dieters is convicted of menacing his nephew. I can't sue you because it's the truth. I scared the hell out of him and had to plead guilty. So you see what I'm saying? Truth is always a defense. So if you are a pedophile, and I got some facts to back it up, boom, I can lay it on you. The other thing that is a defense to defamation is if it is your opinion based upon information that you might have, you sometimes can say, I was just giving my opinion. Now, sometimes that opinion can turn into defamation, but it's your opinion. Another defense, truth, opinion, excuse me, it's not a defense. Another issue is if you repeat defamation, that's a whole new defamation. All right, now, it has to be public, publicized or communicated to a third person. It only has to be one. If Sabrina is sitting in there and the only person that I say Sabrina is a convicted shoplifter, which is false, and the only person I say that to is Josh Wentz, that's enough. But it has to be at least one person. This is not defamation. I send a letter to Sabrina and I say, you are a convicted shoplifter. And she says, I'm suing you for defamation. She can't sue me for defamation. Why? It wasn't communicated to a third person. It's just to her. Publication. It is assumed that somebody's read it. <laughs> like, you could say, well, I posted that on Facebook, but I didn't think anybody saw it. Eh. That's defamation. Now, just so you know, we cover this. The law, unfortunately, for all of us, is if somebody defames you on, just so you know, if somebody defames you on social media, you can sue them for defamation. 
as long as it fits the definition. Who you can't sue, unfortunately, is Facebook because the law protects them. They say, oh, we're just providing the platform here. It's a bunch of crap. But just so you know, now, if you are a private person, now, even though they're my producers, they're not public figures. They're not. Josh and Sabrina are not public figures. All that is necessary for it to be actionable is negligence. Now, you can have intent, you can have malice, but it is a negligent standard. So, oops, I didn't mean to say Sabrina was a shoplifter, but I accidentally posted it. Too bad, that's enough. Now, if you are a public figure, like yours truly, I'm a public figure. It's very unfair, but you can defame the living hell out of me unless I can prove it was done with malice. And I wrote this down to make sure I, there's clarity. It has to be actual malice, where you knew it was false, or you acted with reckless disregard whether it was true. In other words, if you accidentally defame me, and negligently defame me, I can't sue you. There's a reason why. This is the famous New York Times Sullivan case, and you heard Trump complain about it. They need to change the law. I personally think a public figure should be able to sue for defamation just like anybody else. Uh, for whatever reason, this actual malice standard is hard to prove, and therefore, it's hard for a public figure to win a defamation case. Now, the standard also is clear and convincing. As we go through these lectures, you're gonna hear some different standards. Beyond all reasonable doubt is the criminal standard. Preponderance of the evidence is your typical civil case standard. You tip the scales, car wreck, you gotta prove it. For fraud and for defamation of a public figure, it has to be clear and convincing evidence, which is like, yeah, ain't no question about it. It's clear and convincing. It has to do with the harm to the reputation and character of somebody. It also can be a person or an entity. A business can be defamed. The Dominion voting machine brought that case against Fox News, and Fox News came. That business won a $700 million settlement with Fox News. Your business can be defamed. Now, if they say uh, Independence Motors, I, I don't think there's an Independence Motors, Independence Motors sucks, not defamation. If you say Independence Motors is scamming people um, at a 10% every time they pay them, that's defamation. And again, always remember this. I've said a lot of stuff on my show and over the years. And you know what? I've never had to pay, to my knowledge, I don't know if there was some BS case that I settled for a few bucks to get rid of it, but I can tell you right now, I've never got myself in a pickle by defaming somebody. Why? Because the stuff I said is true. <laughs> When I say Kenny Bach is a sick pervert who molested young girls, guess what? If somebody said that about you and it wasn't true, wouldn't you sue them? I would. Never been sued. Never been sued. Uh, now, there's a lot of people who say, well, you don't bring the laws to because it brings attention to it. Well, you know what? If somebody said that I was a pedophile and I am not, I would sue their ass. Um, now, slander. Defamation has got two options. Slander is oral. I say to Josh, Sabrina is a shoplifter. If I write it to Josh, that's libel. Slander is oral. Libel is written. It's all defamation. What are your damages you're entitled to? Your damages include emotional, shame, humiliation, anxiety, mental and physical pain and suffering, 
medical bills, if you had to see a psychiatrist over it, economic loss, lost wages, unable to find work, lost business. Drake Law is representing Chris Thieneman in a defamation case against Mike McConnell, the county attorney in Louisville, who publicly said that he was convicted of domestic violence, he wasn't, and that women should be afraid of him and run for your lives, so to speak. That case goes to trial October 31st. Chris suffered a great deal emotionally over that. He's a Louisville developer, and the whole world thinks he beats up on women. It's not true. Um, Per se, this is interesting, per se, By the way, per se, sounds a little bit like presumed, right? That's what it means. Is it's presumed to cause harm. These are interesting. One, crime of moral turpitude. True. By the way, I used to go to high schools and scare the hell out of high school kids. Josh Wentz, I used to tell them, I said, if you say that a girl in your class is a slut, they could sue you. If you say that a girl in your class is a whore, they can sue you. And guess what? It is per se. There's presumed harm. So be careful out there. And, you know, this happens on social media. You get all this stuff talking, you know, people saying things. But moral turpitude, that that could apply to a guy too. But calling a woman a slut is defamation. Unless you got proof. Truth of defense. You got all the proof you need. All right. Contagious disease society would exclude you from. Like you said, uh, let me see. Joe Blow has syphilis. I'm not going to use a real name on that one. Joe Blow has syphilis. Defamation, unless you got proof. By the way, in litigation, you can develop the truth. You can subpoena records. You get those medical records and prove he has syphilis. You win. Unfitness and lack of integrity to do your duties. You, you say that Joe Blow is a thief. Joe Blow is an embezzler. Things like that. Also, per se, your profession. So if you defame somebody relative to their profession. Now, here is the biggest kicker. Uh, people have asked, have asked me this over and over again. I get texts. I get emails. I get messages. I get all the questions where all of these things are meant. All of them are The neighbor, the friend, the ex, all of this stuff, everything. We meet all the criteria for all this stuff. The $1,000 question is this. Do they have a lot of money? <laughs> if they got a lot of money, sure thing. If they don't have a lot of money, uh, which is usually the case, there's no use bringing the case because you're never going to see a dime. In other words, if your average blue-collar Joe defames you. Unfortunately, there's not much you can do about it. However, are you ready for this? Unless it's specifically excluded, homeowner's insurance will cover defamation. So anybody that owns a home might have homeowner's insurance that will cover defamation. So regardless of all of these factors, the real question is, Do you have the ability to collect it? Nine out of ten times, no. It's like Nick Salmon went after some deep pockets. Let me show you, share with you some defamations, a few that I've handled. I was a young lawyer once, and I had this case where, you can't make this up, grouchy next-door neighbor. Um, Two kids are tossing a ball. Ball goes in the grouchy neighbor's yard. Grouchy neighbor Josh Wentz tells these two boys, who are like preteen. I don't want your ball in my yard anymore, and your mom's a bar hopping whore. I sued for that woman, the neighbor. Mark Arson represented the neighbor, and the case settled. <laughs> you can't tell a kid his mom's a bar hopping whore. <laughs> it's awful. It wasn't true, and that case settled. Um, But bottom line is defamation is really, really, I know the law as good as anybody. My most famous defamation case was Sarah Jones' uh, case against the dirty.com, where they said awful things that weren't true. 
Uh, we got a big verdict. It was reversed, uh, not because it wasn't true. Got reversed based upon that dirty.com had a platform. And it's such BS because on that platform, they edited it. They decided what goes up, what doesn't come down. They're like a newspaper. So it's really unfair. It's really unfair, especially when they do those things. So anyway, that's the law on defamation. Remember, whether it's defamation or anything else, you can always text and email me because I'm a retired lawyer. As long as I don't take money from you, I can tell you what, what I think, just like your neighbor can. However, if it's a real case, I'll put you in contact with a lawyer that can handle it in my world. Make sure they're, they, you're taken good care of. It's really interesting. Defamation's hot issue these days. This is the Bulldog. Every dog has her day. You have a great one.